Hello, everybody. We're back again. Hope everyone's fine. Wherever you are in the world, whatever time it is in the world. We're back with Mr. Gypsy Stratton, Miss Lori Bird. Hey, Gypsy. Hey, Joe. We're also with the great Joe Church, who is yes, sir. <laughs> possible for all of us to have this place to speak and talk and learn. And I'm very, very appreciative of Joe and his wife. For I appreciate you. For making this possible. So, yes, we, we're all happy to be here. I'm glad. That's very good. <laughs> yeah, good, good. Good. Well, Gypsy, uh, today uh, I know you was going to present on handling uh, and, and the importance of it and what the people in general need to know and what trainers may know. You can take off, bro. Okay. So, I, uh, I'm going to say it again. I'm a dog lover. So, I'm going to say greetings, dog lovers. And I mean, I love dogs. I love dock diving dogs. I love frisbee catching dogs. I love rescue dogs. I love a diver dogs. I love police dogs. I love uh, uh, therapy dogs. Highly love and appreciate them. I am a dog lover. I, love, I even love sport and sport dogs. But my issue has always been separate sport and personal protection because they are not the same and when you sell as trainers when you sell your, uh, your services um, to people for their hard earned money and you tell them you are uh, providing them with a personal protection dog which we love to call pet protector because these are not dogs that work uh, part-time for the military or part-time for the SWAT team or part-time for uh, the San Quentin guards. These are family animals. They're with you, your old people in your home, and your children. You would have neighbors. These are not supposed to be race cars. High-octane uh, Indy cars. That's why they have a track for those things. Because it's a sport and everything is about going faster, taking more chances. And the sport industry and dog training is basically the same thing. It's all about the bite. The bite, the bite, the bite. Teach the bite. Make the bite the most important thing. When I, as a protection trainer, know that it is not the most important thing. It may be a necessary thing, but it is not the most important thing that a dog, your dog, your pet, needs to do or be trained to do to protect you and your family and your home. I just want people to get real. Tell the truth. When they go to church lady house, don't tell them, yes ma'am, I'm here to train your dog for personal protection. When you're really a sport dog trainer. And not even that. I'm not even going to give you that. You are an agitator and or a decoy. Training has more to do than just the one aspect that most so-called professionals present themselves today. They present themselves as trainers. A trainer has to be an omni-thoughtful individual. He has to, again, consider who's in the house. What do you want this dog for, sir? What is it that job that, what is the problem? How many people live in your house? Do, are you, do you have a spouse? Are there children? Are there old people? Because you don't want to put a vampire in everybody's house. It's not necessary for your personal protection. Your dog, especially if he's trained properly, is going to give you all the layers of protection. The four aspects, scientific, behavioral aspects of protection are alarm, challenge, threat display, engagement. Engagement being bite. If you notice, that's the last part of the equation. So I'm not saying no, no, no biting. No, I'm not saying that because there are fools out here. Some of them fools need to be bit. I believe in that. So anyway, I'm sorry, man. Sometimes I get worked up. 
Um, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. So anyway, I'm going to tell you. Uh, I just finished telling you how, how I love dogs and dog trainers and all different aspects. So I'm going to tell you something about the Personal Protection Dog Association. The association that my wife and I thought up and presented to other master dog trainers in our area. Um, one being Dean Buntley. I wish people would go uh, to his uh, website. It's still uh, live. D-E-A-N-B-U-N-D. L E Y Dean Buntley and uh, Dean was uh, one of the people that we went to that I asked please be on this board be one of the knights of the round table please be um, a founder of this uh, organization personal protection dog association so that was Dean and I'm going to tell you another one is Sarge Sarge was the head of the Cook County um Sheriff's Forest Preserve Unit or something, a uh, canine unit. The head, the head guy. A police trainer, a police dog trainer, head of a canine unit. He also is on the board. He also did, I personally go to and ask, please, Sarge, be on this board. So, he's a cop. He trains police dogs. Dean Buntley was a sport dog trainer. And I'm going to get more into this because Dean and I, um, man, I can't wait to get to tell you about Dean. But I'm just trying to tell you, I have no bias towards other dog trainers or the disciplines that they pursue. I own them to be more careful and truthful when it comes to the public. The public has certain rules and regulations and responsibilities that the police do not have. The public is more liable, more in danger if their dog bites someone. It has to be the right reason. If you create just a biting monster, you have more probability of having a problem from this biting monster that you've created. So anyway, let me let me let me go back to Dean. Please, y'all go and look up Dean. D E A N B U N D L E Y. Dean Butler. Oh. Dean, I must say, is probably the most intelligent dog trainer I have ever come close to or had a conversation with. So intellectually superior that only a fool would argue with him. <laughs> only a fool would argue with Dean. Um, and he was a sport man. And so Dean and I, I, as I revered him so much when he would come into a room, I would bow and he would tell me, stop doing that. And I would just bow. And I, I think pretty highly of myself. I always have when it comes to dog training, because I've always been who I am and uh, people I learned from uh, and the dogs that I've been able, so fortunate to help people with. But I had so much reverence, past respect, reverence for Dean Buntley. And so we would uh, have discussions. I would always have discussions with him about dog training and sport. He did sport again. Dean would buy dogs from Europe that were like Schutz and Threes. He would buy dogs. He, he had it like that. And he would bring dogs to America that was superior to any dog that was here. And he uh, introduced... Uh, sport or he was the the torchbearer for sport in our dog training community so you know we i've always uh uh loved seeing what another person can do especially with dogs i'm a dog lover so i'm gonna read something to you and this is from wayne singleton wayne singleton i'm, I'm gonna get to him but this is what wayne wrote when dean died in 2020 it says rest in peace Dean Buntley, the man who introduced us to the Malinois breed and did so much for young black trainers in the Chicago area. Midwest Working Dog Association was formed by Dean. Huh. Come on, y'all. Midwest Working Dog Association was formed by Dean and he was on the original G of the Personal Protection Dog Association. We're not trying to take credit for his great work we're just saying 
He, we're honored that he was original. Uh, Dean's quite man, a dog man out of this world. But anyway, uh, Midwest Working Dog Association was formed by Dean. I'm talking, I'm reading Wayne, Wayne Singleton's uh, uh, words here. Okay. It was an, an honor to carry it on because Wayne now is the person who Wayne now is the person who owns the uh, and operates the Working Dog Association, Midwest Working Dog Association. It was an honor to carry it on. True dog man, leader in the black community. Dean was a real citizen. He was a big shot. Yeah, I was, man, Dean was something else. Wow. Yeah. Uh, um, a leader in the black community and very inspiring for young men who had a dream. And then he goes on the list, the dogs. And I just told you, Dean imported the best dogs in the world. Okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the best in the world. Like I said, he had it like that. Uh, and Wayne goes on to say, for, uh, uh, a very inspiring for young men who had a dream. From Rocky to Luca to Orca to Rex. Those are the dogs that... Uh, uh, I never worked these dogs, let me say. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was afraid of most of them. These, <laughs> dogs, these are real dogs. These are not just uh, a guy trains some sport dogs and it's all fun and games. No. And I've always said... When people try to say, oh, sport dogs aren't real and they don't bite you unless you have a suit on, they don't know anything because I know they will. Uh, because a bite is a bite. When they get there, they still want to put their mouth on you. Um, and they uh, have devastating bites. Uh, so, so much devastating that it's hard to, well, uh, it's hard to get them out of the bite. Uh, but we'll get to that. Um, so these dogs, Rocky, Luca, Orca, and Rex, the lessons learned from letting us learn on these fascinating animals will always be with me and many others. Uh, let, let that sink in. Dean would bring the finest dogs in the world to Chicago. He would train these young men, Wayne Singleton being one on these fine dogs so you know how great these young men had to be after Dean because he didn't just put them out there in the backyard Dean was a educated man he liked to teach mm -hmm. so Dean not only brought the finest dogs he brought also the finest application and trained the finest men in America to work on these fine dogs Wayne being one of them who carried on his Midwest Working Dog Association. I want to point this out, that Wayne, that uh, Dean Buntley sat on our board. He is a master dog trainer. I have his name on my certification. So I don't have a problem with sport trainers. I just wish they were trainers. And I wish they would stop calling themselves protection trainers because they are not. There are two different methodologies, two different sciences to creating a pet protector. That's your personal dog that protects mm -hmm. your home and your family. And a sport animal. Two different worlds. Two different purposes. So this, they should not be mistaken for each other because they are not each other. So Wayne Singleton now just recently in the last few years has been Awarded Master Dog Trainer Status in the PPDA, Personal Protection Dog Association. So go look Wayne up. Wayne knows and does more than any of you guys out there. Go look him up. He's the baddest man in the world. Okay? He learned from Dean. That's why he's so great. And, of course, what he's made of and the dog man he is. But it's important what you learn, when you learn, who taught it to you mm -hmm. simple, especially when it comes to personal protection because Wayne is a, actually a master personal protection dog trainer so okay I wanted to first put that uh, in motion to let people mm -hmm. I have a real background a real depth of knowledge 
about sport training. Mm-hmm. No knowledge. Not knowledge that somebody told me about. <laughs> right, right. Not knowledge that I got off of reading somebody's blog. Right. I'm looking at somebody the same age as me or a few years in the game longer than me uh, with videos, and I'm so impressed. And the only thing you're impressed about is the bite, basically. Uh, and and so they're the ones. No, they're not the ones. You guys need to learn from people who know things. So let us let me educate you right now. There's a huge difference in uh, protection dog and uh, sport dog. And one of the huge differences, other than the motivation for the work they do, uh, is handling versus no handling. So, Mm -hmm. I I think you're going to show some photographs or something of dogs, but let me paint you a picture. And this is what I learned from Dean, by the way. (laughs) This is what I learned from Dean. Many, many, many conversations because I... Man, his brain was so big, you just had to sit there. And please, Dean, pour more on me. Please, sir, pour more of your brain upon me. Uh, Just only a fool would walk away as long as he's talking. So, um, I used to complain to him about the platform. And he used to, you know, tell me about why it's useful and... You have to say, okay, it, it has its use. Yes, I understand, Dean. But you got to understand also that this is not how you put a protection dog together. And he did understand that. He did. <laughs> hey, Jesse, will you explain to them, when you say the platform, will you give them a visual? I'll probably yeah. put a picture up. But You're absolutely right. A platform, when you look on the internet, you'll see dogs that are up on tables. Some of them are even on round uh, tables, but they're off the ground by not just in- inches, but uh, feet off the ground. Uh, they are also chained to a tether, usually a post or something that's built into the platform that will hold the dog. <clears throat> and they're agitated in that platform. Uh, but their goal long before they get to the platform is the bite and they're shown a lot of bites they're tempted they're tantalized by a lot of bites and they've already been conditioned through we talked about in the last time we talked about uh, how people can condi- sport guys condition puppies to chase and bite things and hold it and be obsessed with it so when they once they do that good as pups they move them okay let's put them on the platform so the platform, in my opinion, is lazy dog training, to be exact. To be exact. <laughs> my opinion is lazy dog training, but I'll get to that. Um, uh, but the the platform has a psychological effect on, on an animal. Uh, when you take him off the ground, oh, and by the way, there's probably no circumstance where he is going to protect your protect or your protection dog is going to be working from a platform in order to protect you. So it is... Um, you have to know that it's not uh, legitimately a part of protection work and I'll explain why but uh, Dean uh, explained to me that by putting the dog up off the ground it uh, relieves him of certain mental energy that he has to put into being off being on his four feet which is a natural thing Uh, and we If you want to think about it, think about when you walk, how much brain power does it take you to walk and not walk, you know, to be able to walk in a straight line uh, and to stand up. It takes some mental uh, burning of uh, brain cells. If you don't believe me, ask a policeman who is trained to give you a sobriety test uh, when he tells you to walk forward and you're encumbered. So, yes, it does have a psychological effect. So, again, also... Um, when you put walls up on either side of the dog, it now becomes like a blinder in horse racing where the dog only sees what's in front of him. So once again, more of his brain power is reduced for what's in a natural situation and now being able to be more focused on the objective, 
course, there's always an objective. There's a reason for this. And Dean used to tell me, and I used, I used to have to say, okay, Dean, I get it, man. You're right, you're right, I'm wrong. But what I'm not wrong about is it has no place in protection dog training. And he would have to nod his head and, you know, we'd go on talking about things. But didn't argue about this. He explained it to me so that I truly understood it. Also, and here's the biggest part, the dog is tethered to an inanimate object. So he has no idea who's in control of this thing. The only thing that's in control of this process is the bite. It's the motivation. It's the reason why he acts such a fool in that box or on that platform. Don't believe me? Go on the internet. Look at any of these dog trainers, and I'm sorry. Some of them I have to respect, but I have to be honest and truthful. Platform training is not protection training. So let me go on. So now you've got him off the ground. He doesn't have to think about that. You've got him tethered to an inanimate uh, object or force stronger than he is. So he is putting his maximum pressure on that uh, tie out maximum pressure for what for the bite he's not doing it for you he's doing it for the bite protection dog trainer see a trainer is involved with all the aspects of the dog an agitator and or a decoy is only going to be involved mentally with the bite which excludes them from being professional protection dog trainers so I'm sorry they're agitators and or decoys all they know about is the bite and so that's what they concentrate most on even though it is only one fourth of the defensive protocol defensive protocol alarm challenge threat display engagement just the first part of it the bark And we all know the difference between a dog barking at a rabbit and or a butterfly and a dog barking at a sinister figure or a figure that is encroaching upon its territory. We all know the difference in that bark. That's an alarm bark. So the bad guy knows it too. And that bark alone has saved millions of people for a long, 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 long time. But... These trainers very seldom work on that. They don't even think about that. So Dean uh, made me fully aware of the effects and reasoning for using the platform. Again, it narrows the consciousness of the dog. He only has to think about the bite. Uh, He is tethered to an inanimate object. And he is putting his full force against that object in order to achieve the only motivated goal he has. And that is to bite the equipment that is in front of him. And the more he's agitated in this manner, or yes, agitated in this manner, the more obsessed he becomes mentally, uh, bent even, or deranged, I would say. Uh, Not a fault of the dog, but a fault of agitators and decoys love the bite. So once they achieve the bite, oh, let's get another one. And once they achieve it, well, let's do it again. And they love the bite so much. They overtrain the bite. They overdo it. They o- it's called overkill. So, here's the real sin. That's a sin right there. That's like creating the fastest car in the world, but it has no brakes. And you can't really steer it. It only goes in a straight line. That, and it goes faster than anything else. And it goes and goes and goes. That, that's not safe to have in a household or next door or or in a society especially when you have liabilities that are attached to the owner of a dog that bites we have to think about these things people and you have to notice when your trainer is not talking more about the other aspects and he's working all the time on this dog biting then you have to stop giving him money yes but on the back of our book an owner's guide to raising your pet protector that is one of my golden rules it's your dog And it's your money. But you should know the truth. So. Because the greatest sin. Is that there is no handler. 
then ask yourself, why is the dog this aggressively doing what it's doing? With all its might, he's not doing it for anyone other than his objective, and that is the bite. In protection training, a dog needs to know why he is aggressive. He needs to know who he's doing it for. He needs to know who is in control of it. He needs to behave in a manner that doesn't overpower his handler. See, you cannot overpower the, the, the tie out because it's a piece of metal or a piece of wood. And the dog learns to put its full weight behind it and it's geared to go in a straight line directly to its objective and that is the person it wants to bite. That's fine for the police dog because all the police have to do is take the dog out and take it off lead and tell them go get him. That's all they got to do. But a, a, a citizen may need to do more than that. A policeman has a gun. He has more weapons on him. Probably has a second gun. He has plenty of bullets. He has restraints. He has mace. He has a radio where he can call a hundred more like him in the next 10 minutes. You are not the police. Mm -hmm. That's right. You need to be able to handle your animal for your defense. I tell people all the time it's like having an axe. You don't throw your axe at a guy 50 feet away. <laughs> you better hold <laughs> your hand till he get close enough for you to put it in his head. Yeah. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. So you want to work your dog close to you. You want your dog to know it's his job to stay as close to you as possible. And when you move a certain direction to follow you. Most dogs, especially if they have obedience, if they're on a six foot lead. And they're being uh, at the end of a six foot lead aggressively towards a man. Whether he's a sport trainer or a protection trainer, most dogs will, when told no and you start walking away, will get in front of you. Or at least they will turn around and walk away with no mind of the man behind them. Handling is working with your dog that it knows it needs to still stay between you and the bad guy, but also not overpower their handler that they learn to work with you in the moment for the objective I think uh, in the military they call that tactics there are many differences in a situation and you want your dog to follow you knowing it's part of a team a pack so to speak and its job is to stay with us to keep the bad guy off of us but his job is not to chase the bad guy off into the cornfield or around the corner down the alley that's not right. his, if, his, if he even has the inclination to do that his master or handler should be able to say no come and he break it off and he comes back to his master but that's only accomplished through handling during the training process and not making the bite the most important thing in the process. Because how important is it that your dog, if he's off lead, is able to stop uh, 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 advancing towards a person, attacking you might even say, and come back to your side. That takes training, mm -hmm. conditioning. The platform is never, ever, ever, never, ever going to teach him that. Because he's working in a strange position off the ground blocked in on both sides creating tunnel vision and tethered to something see your dog when you're trained in protection you're trained how to handle that dog your dog feels the nuances of your balance and if he's with a good trainer any good trainer is going to teach a dog not to drag his master anywhere into a bite, afraid of a bite, running away from a bite, down the hill, up the hill, nowhere for a dog drag you into. Not even when he is upset or has a target and that that 
platform does not teach handling. It only teaches targeting. And there is no element of of working with a person for a person. So the dog is not doing it to protect you. He's doing it to satisfy his thirst for the bike. Is it is there any um, situation would you uh, that you would use a back tie? Not with the yes. elevation. Yes. Okay. I would if I had an impaired person or a person who had a dog that was so big that I knew it was going to pull him off his feet. And I would only use the back tie as a safety, not a primary. When you can see a back tie is full extended, straight line, that means the dog is putting pressure on that back tie. And that can't be because now the back tie is handling the dog. The handler has to be involved. The back tie is a safety that if the handler slips or gets pulled over, then the the agitator or decoy doesn't get bit and we can continue training. So it's a safety thing. And it's only for a person who I'm looking at you and your dog weighs more than you do or you uh, 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 don't have good habits and you lean over all the time. Uh, and then I'll have to take uh, precaution and yes, I would use a back tie in that situation. Now, there are other times you use a back tie, but we don't have to get into that. Well, I will, to be just totally honest. Sometimes you use a back tie to establish in a dog's mind that it could work independent. Yes. Okay. And a lot of times okay. you do that if a dog shows fear uh, initially when he's working a man. That if I can show him that he can work independently even a little bit, then he'll work a whole lot more uh, securely or with confidence uh, when you put him back on his master's side. So those are the two reasons, and both reasons are scientific and have a, and are valid reasons uh, for training. So to answer your question, yes, those two uh, instances I would. But just uh, see, the problem is uh, it's lazy again. A guy will put his dog on a back tie so he don't have to physically uh, handle his animal. It's again lazy. So yeah, I hope I answered that properly. I noticed something too. Yeah. And maybe you can explain it. That uh, just looking through some of your videos, that you have people stand in a certain posture when they're handling those dogs. So can you go into that? Yes. So Earl Jones taught me that. Uh, uh, and also, I used to study martial arts, but Earl is a real factor, my teacher. That when you stand up straight and you lean over, you just, even if you just nod your head over so you can see your toes, you are off balance. And even the slightest pressure from behind or in front will push you off of that stance that you're on. Just by merely looking down to where you can see your toes. Not bending your back, not bending your knees, just your head alone in that posture will put you off balance and the slightest force can move you. Um, so I teach people to, first I give them an example, I ask them, have you ever skied? Have you ever been on skis? And you know, no they haven't, but they've seen it. They know the concept. So. If you look at a skier, they're never leaning forward. They're always straight up. And so I teach people to stand straight up. I also teach you that if you, if the dog is on your right hand, your right foot should be forward so that you can balance better. You can keep your posture, which will help you to handle your animal, which will help your animal learn how to work in your defense in an aggravated uh, situation, protecting you from a bad guy. So yeah, did I answer that question? I hope I did. You did. Okay. Please, if you have another one, I'd be glad. To okay. Answer. But this handling, again, uh, Joe is going to put the some video of some of the people that I've helped in uh, with their dog. Uh, I don't ever, and I have never used as much as I respected Dean, loved him, understood. I'm so glad though that. He explained it to me so that I'm able to explain it to you. It has a scientific reason other than laziness and cowardice because a dog in a, this chain up on a box 
uh, is not as dangerous as a dog that's on all four feet. <laughs> that's in some mm. hand. So that's kind of, to me, you're being lazy as a trainer. Uh, mm -hmm. Because, uh, and you're not taking on the responsibility of training the handler. That's another real job that it takes a, a person who is aware, who is actually trained to stand and accomplish. That they train both the dog and the handler so that they are a team, obedience wise and protection wise. The dog needs to know that someone is driving and it has to have confidence in that driver to be to ride shotgun for you. I think that right. that's a good way to put it. You, yeah. know, you gotta have confidence in your driving is gonna help y'all survive this along with his aggression and his work, his defense, his protocol. He's got that, that you don't know, man. That when your dog knows who he's working for and you know he knows who he's working for, that is a beautiful thing. When you're just holding on for dear life, <laughs> and that's not beautiful. Mm -hmm. So the trainer is what makes that happen and or the person who has the knowledge to know that he has to be in control of all this aggression. But yeah, I wanted to just let people know about Dean, about Wayne, who is a master dog trainer. Uh, he's the youngest personal protection dog, master dog trainer in the country. Uh, go look him up, Wayne Singleton. Fantastic. Uh, and Dean, please go look up because Wayne, the product of Dean. And Dean, uh, is a product of what I, my knowledge, my my depth of knowledge about these things. Dean is the arbiter, the 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 source that he poured it into me. So yes, I'm able to pour it into you. Again, uh, for the public to understand that a dog that's only taught to bite. If you notice that the trainer is only putting stuff in your dog's mouth or trying to encourage your dog by tantalizing him with objects uh, to, to, uh, to uh, ignite what they call the prey drive. Uh, a lot of times even they'll go so far as if your dog is older already and doesn't, not interested in all that kind of stuff, uh, he doesn't have the right drive. You need a different dog. That's what they'll tell you. Uh, but if they're trying to put things in your dog's mouth or encourage your dog to bite objects such as pillows, uh, uh, anything, then if they're doing that most of the time that you're training, then something is wrong. They're not training a protection dog. They're training a sport dog. If your trainer is trying to get you to put your dog up on a... Uh, uh, my wife's telling me to wrap it up. Uh, if if, uh, if uh, they're trying to encourage you to put their, your dog up on a, uh, um, a platform instead of teaching you to handle that dog and teaching that dog to be handled, then something's wrong. Again, it's your dog and it's your money, but I think mm -hmm. no. And I think the trainers should just be real because most trainers can work without the platform. Uh, it's essential that a dog protect you 360 degrees around. That is essential in personal protection. If your trainer hasn't taught your dog a 360, he is not a protection trainer. Period. I don't care who he is. I don't care where he's at. I don't care what his name is. I don't care how great his van is. I don't care how nice his house is. I don't care how great his, uh, his YouTube channel or his... Uh, Facebook is I do not care if he hasn't started your dog in protection on the 360 he is not a protection trainer now that's how you tell so beware buyer beware is what I'm telling you got it got it Did I all right more questions for me because my wife's telling me to knock it off no I know no I didn't I think you covered it and uh, you dropped some history tonight too uh, though you guys got a, uh, did y'all just have a litter? Yes, my wife would tell you. Okay, okay. So I wanted uh, uh, y'all to talk about that. I also want to tell the public that uh, Mrs. Lori and Gypsy does phone consulta consultations, and 
believe it or not, they are a big help when somebody can kind of walk you through things. And, um, of course, they're going to probably tell you about the book. So, Ms. Laura, you want to say something? Sure. You can go to the website, rockofageskennel.info, and phone consultation specials are listed on there. And there's other good stuff you can look around our website at. But, yes, right now I got a beautiful litter of German Shepherds with a fantastic Czech German pedigree, working dog, straight back, gorgeous i i expect um you know to be big and i got my eye on one right now he's solid black and who he's a big boy and if you ever do go to our page or our facebook page you'll see a dog that i call black and he's the grandpa rock of ages kennel facebook page he's the grandpa and this pup has so much potential already to be him it's amazing and I also have my little ones, miniature pinchers. Where do they find them? Excellent, 100% European champion bloodlines, great health. You can also find them at my Rock of Ages Kennel Facebook page. Ooh. Ooh. Who's, that, who's that dog you had in the, uh, in the truck with you about to bite somebody's hand off? <laughs> sure. I saw a video. Who was that? I personally call him my little pocket pistol. Because oh, really? he, he is a little bad boy. I'm, <laughs> you know, he had some work, house protection work and car protection work. And believe me, you're driving around, he knows his job. He sees somebody strange standing there. If I stop at the oh, gas station or walking past the vehicle, he's like, Should I get him now, mom? Should I get him now? He's <laughs> <laughs> and he's yeah. a, a great dog. I picked him up out of um, Romania in Transylvania, Eastern Europe. Eastern Europe um, again okay. ported with superb is. champion bloodlines on both his mother and father's side. They've been world champions like seven times already. Yeah. And, oh wow! And everything else you can think of. I waited years great to get my hands on these puppies. Great for protection. Great, 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 great. little dog. Hey, sure. that dog was definitely with it. I was like shocked. Yeah. <laughs> little dogs, you know, ten pounds, but they yeah. are excellent alarmists. And if something can alarm and you and to get ready yeah. to get something in your hand, that's the help of a pet protector. That's right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Check us out on Facebook, Rock of Ages Kennel, or our website, Rock of Ages Kennel.info. Okay. Hey, guys, we thank you so much. Thank right. you, brother. We thank okay. you so much, and we'll talk again soon. We shall. All right. All right see you. Bye-bye.